November is Diabetes Awareness Month, and the CDC says more than 38 million Americans have diabetes, and another 98 million are pre-diabetic. So this morning in today's checklist, we're going to break down how to define and manage the disease. And here to help us do that is Dr. Jen Cottle. She's a, a family physician, also associate professor at Rowan University. Welcome back, Dr. Cottle. Good morning. Hey, Good hey, morning. Guys. Good morning. So let's start off. First of all, let's define the terms. What exactly is diabetes and, and how many different types are there? I'm so glad you asked this question. So diabetes is a condition where our blood sugar is too high. So normally what happens? You eat a sandwich, you eat something, the food goes into our body. There is sugar in the blood. Normally, insulin, which is a hormone released by our pancreas, comes out and grabs that sugar in the blood, brings it into the cells. That's yeah. what we want to happen, so that the cells can use the sugar. In the case of diabetes, either the insulin is not enough or it's not working right. So the blood sugar actually mm. raises too high. And we have a few different types of diabetes, to your point, Al. So type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune condition. Uh, this is actually a condition that people usually get when they're younger. It can happen in adulthood as well. But this is where the pancreas is actually damaged mistakenly by the body and therefore doesn't release insulin. So people with type 1 diabetes don't have enough or don't have any insulin. No. They have to take lifelong insulin injections. This is an autoimmune disease. Mm -hmm. Now, type 2 diabetes, this is by and large the most common type of diabetes. This is caused by lifestyle changes, lifestyle, and also genetics. So the issue here is that there's insulin resistance, our body doesn't respond to insulin, or we don't have enough. And generally, we see this in the case of overweight, obesity, not eating healthy foods, also um, genetics as well. And again, this happens in adults as well. Uh, we also see gestational diabetes. This happens in pregnant women. And then we have to keep in mind that diabetes can be caused by certain medical conditions or meds. Like sometimes people who have patients who are in prednisone, yeah. and if they're on it long enough, they actually might become diabetic because wow. it increases their sugar. So keep mm. that in mind. Okay. Any of these types that you just laid out there, Dr. Cottle, can any of them be reversed or not? That's a great question. So I love talking about this with my patients. First of all, type 1. That is an autoimmune disease. People with type 1 can't help it. They have to have lifelong insulin. We are praying for a cure. We are so praying mm -hmm. for a cure, but it is lifelong. Type 2 diabetes, however, for many people, if they maintain a healthy weight, eat a healthy diet, um, exercise, etc., I have many patients that have actually been able to put their type 2 diabetes mm -hmm. in remission. That's awesome. Now, it means, what that means is that their blood sugar is controlled without the use of meds. So I always say to people, have hope, you yeah. know? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. I feel like sometimes we talk about diabetes so often we take it for granted or, yes. you know, people don't. So I think this is good that we're oh, talking good. about it today. Good. But can you talk about how it can be dangerous and we shouldn't get desensitized to it? Thank you so much. And this is why, for anyone out there who's like going to the doctor and your doctor is saying, we got to get your numbers under control. You're pre-diabetic. Or... Pre yeah, pre yeah, any of this. It's so important because too much sugar. Remember, if there's too much sugar in the blood, it's got to go somewhere. Right. Where does it go? It'll go to your eyes, it can mm. damage your eyes. It'll go to your kidneys, can damage your kidneys. It can get into your blood vessels in your heart, mm. re increase your risk of heart attacks and strokes. It can uh, uh, cause uh, nerve damage in your feet. So remember, high blood sugar is not benign. It's mm. doing something yeah. to you, which is why we want to control it. Okay. We've been talking about GLP-1s for weight loss for so long yeah. now, but let's not forget that was originally created to help with diabetes, Thank right? you for saying this, because a lot of people say, well, oh, are, these are for diabetes only. Mm -hmm. No. So for the first GLP-1 was approved in two, and by the way, they've been around a long time. Mm. People think they're brand new. No, the first GLP-1 was approved for diabetes in 2005, uh -huh. 20 years ago. Mm. And then the first GLP-1 approved for weight loss was approved in 2014, mm. like 11 years ago. So, but this is the thing. GLP-1s are really game changers, and there's two different types of medications and indications. So let's use semaglutide as an example. Let's just go right to an example. Semaglutide is FDA approved as Ozempic for those who are diabetic and FDA approved for Wagovi for those who need to lose weight. Mm. They're different doses, different indications, but they are approved for both, which mm. is to your point. And, and they have lots of help prevent diabetes if you're prone to it? Yes, and this is why these medications are important. I always say, let's not shame people. There's so much yeah. shame out there on the I internet agree. about, oh, she's on that weight loss. Yeah. Listen, I am so glad we finally have something. Right. By the way, these medications not only improve heart benefits, they have heart benefits, they have kidney benefits, um, they help lower your blood sugar, and then I have many patients 
patients who are pre-diabetic who've been able to reverse their diabetes uh, because of the weight they've been able to lose. Wow. They're not right for everyone. Mm -hmm. you got to talk to your doctor. But are, there, are there newer developments yes. as far as Very quickly. diabetes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So oral GLP-1s, that would be awesome. We have one right now, but it's only for diabetes. A lot of my patients don't like needles. Yeah. So it would be great if we had an oral medication, potentially for weight loss. Yeah. Continuous glucose monitors, so people don't have to continually prick their finger yeah. to get their blood sugar. Um, there's also smart insulin pins that helps them people figure out their doses. And finally, there's a medication called t on the market. It's the first of its kind. It's a monoclonal antibody that helps prevent the progression to stage 3 type 1 diabetes wow. and people who are stage 2 type 1 diabetes. So to delay that progression could be a game changer. Mm -hmm. Dr. Cuddle, that was great. Solid. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I like you. I just went to college. <laughs> <laughs> a master class this morning. Hey, thanks for watching. And don't forget, you can catch the Today Show every morning on NBC or take today when you're on the go. Just follow the Today podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen.